fight tonight. You send your kids into school thinking they would be safe. I ask that question all the time. But how would you feel? One day you're sitting you're sitting in the cafeteria eating your lunch, oh, nom, 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 nom. and then all of a sudden someone sprays pepper spray in someone's eye because they got in a fight about the he said she said bullshit. It's like it'd be like this. She's my girlfriend! No, she's mine! No, she's mine! No, she's mine! No, she's mine! The case that we're talking about today happened just two days ago. Back in back on Monday, at a middle school sent students home early because because of that pepper spray incident. Several parents have contacted Chris Communications, which is Channel Six, saying that their students are complaining of eye irritation and respiratory issues, and have rushed, rushed the campus to pick up the children. Chief Kirby said a soon spray pepper spray in the cafeteria floor. The spray quickly went airborne after affecting several students. <laughs> they are actively investigating and take appropriate action. If it's determined it contain, it, he committed a crime and he will be detained. I mean, the question is, should pepper spray be allowed in school? Question is, should pepper spray be allowed at school? No. The reason why it is because it's, it could be a safety issue for all students. What are you trying to use it to defend yourself? Well, that's a good point. OC sprays controlled substance that students are not allowed to bring on school grounds. Judicial policy should be reviewed and updated. The district should have also have guidelines for for assistant students after the sprays were released. I mean, the reason why it's a safety issue, I mean, if it's toxic, it can make someone sick. It can, like, like, one spray of that pepper spray, and then, bam, like that. But yeah, they close early. Why couldn't they just uh, resume class? I mean, it's the children who are voluntary. If it was happening at a high school, then they'd be like, they can just. I mean, I mean, seriously, pepper spray is like a weapon. Guns, knives, pepper spray. It's not allowed because it's a weapon and it could be harmful to a student. That student just sprayed the pepper spray on the floor, which immediately just went into the air. Let's do a reenactment. This could be pepper spray. The way that he would have done it, he would have just shook it up, spray it on the floor. Immediately, it went just got right up in the air. That's exactly what happened. That's exactly what would have happened. Exactly what happened. He sprayed on the floor, and then it just went up in the air. So again, this could be pepper spray sprayed on the floor, went up into the air, and then. Like, how would you, like, that's a safety issue people's nose. What if it's non-toxic? I mean, like, X. It's flammable. I mean, if it's flammable, you can't bring fire to it. 
I mean, it's a safety issue for all students. I mean, pepper spray should not be allowed. Unless, the only time pepper spray should be used is if you're trying to defend yourself. Out on the street. Not in school, only out in the street. Like, someone's trying to give you your money, like, like you don't get out of the way, you go, tss. That's when pepper spray should be used. Plus, there was also a case There's also a case that happened this year. That happened in April of this year. Mind you, it happened several it happened months ago. It happened back in April. This is from a Gregory Gregory Portland student. This high school student was arrested last week after reports of a pepper spray released inside a classroom. According to the GPISD, this, this is what the GPISD said. Thursday morning, students and staff waited on their hold for a short time following a report of students in a classroom experiencing the symptoms associated with the potential release of pepper spray. Hold is all level security response for students and staff stay in one location and do not change classes according to the regular schedule to release from the hold. But the school and the resource officers in Portland responded to the issue. And the fire department inspected the room and the air conditioning system. It was shut down for that classroom. Students were removed and evaluated by the nurse for watery eyes and coughing. The parents affected students were called and no class were resumed in that room. The news release says the symptoms began improving after being removed from the classroom. Students were able to continue the school day. Following inspection and clear from the fire department, the campus allowed authorities recommendations to continue the regular school day. But according to the release, police are investigating the incident and interviewed students to find out who took the items to school. One student has been arrested with release states and age and gender of the student was not released. See? That race that's the question that's the answer right there. It's a weapon. Guns, knives are not allowed. Those can be considered weapons. According to the schools school zero tolerance policy for all schools, anything that looks like a weapon is weapon. Tools is a weapon. Electric razors, if you bring an electric razor to school, that's a weapon. He sprayed the pepper spray and it wasn't on the floor. So I think so I thought what he would do what he did was So I thought what he would do was just try to defend him defend himself. It doesn't matter. Weapons are not allowed. This next article happened yesterday. It was on a school bus. School bus, school building, it doesn't matter. No, no student should be allowed to carry pepper spray. No one. Not even one student should have, should have pepper spray. I think what needs to happen is there needs to be tiny, tiny security. There needs to be, there has to be security searching people when they enter the school building or when they enter the school bus, making sure that, that they're not bringing any weapons and stuff. Just have the students search the pockets and then the security people can search through the backpacks and then the parents will be like, this isn't safe. The districts will respond like, we're just trying to make a school a safer place for all students, so we're just trying to... Uh, And it's illegal to have pepper spray in schools. I mean, 
in what you mean school of self defense? Nothing. I mean, if someone's punching you, you do have rights. You don't have the right to hit someone. If you hit someone, it's assault. You assault someone, you could make a press assault charges. <coughs> this happened yesterday out in California. The Paris Bay released the school, school bus, and it was one student hospitalized. All 50 students on that bus were pepper sprayed. The fire department says one student was hospitalized Monday afternoon after pepper spray was released inside a school bus traveling along Highway 58. The school bus, some the school bus district was carrying about 50 students at the time. The fire department was called to Highway 58 Mary Avenue before 4 p.m. for a report of an unknown substance sprayed in the bus. One student was hospitalized and dozens of others complained about the burning itchy eyes and difficulty breathing. Twelve students were treated at once. They're, they were, they're investigating how and why the pepper spray was released. There was cameras. If the cameras would have picked up what happened, then they would have found out who and then Appropriate disciplinary action would, would have been taken. The bottom line is pepper spray is illegal in schools and it should not be allowed. Period. Period. I don't care if... I don't care. No one should be doing No one should be doing it. Period. No one. No one should be a pepper spray. We're trying to make school a safe place, then you guys bring pepper spray. Pepper spray should not be allowed. Period. Alright, next, another school shooting that happened last week. This one out of my mom's hometown, Wisconsin. Here are the latest updates about what happened after the break. Let's turn now to another school shooting. Otherwise, this isn't a school shooting. This is an officer who shot an armed Wisconsin student. This happened on Monday. After an officer on Monday shot an armed 17-year-old high school student in a high school classroom in, in Wisconsin. The suspect who police said pointed a handgun at officers is in stable condition. The police chief told reporters there were no other injuries in that morning incident. But the school resource officer rushed to the classroom after a student saw a classroom with a handgun. Then, and that officer began again, and another student to safety, police said. Other officers responded and tried to start a dialogue with the suspect. After the suspect refused to remove his, remove his hands from his pockets and remove the officers, he removed the gun from his waistband and pointed the officers, and the police chief said. One of the officers, who was not a resource officer, fired the striking suspect. Medical attention was administered, students were evacuated, and the school was placed on lockdown. But the firearm was recovered from the scene. Todd Gray, the school district superintendent, said, This is superintendent's worst nightmare. The officer who opened, who opened the fire in 11 year veteran of the police department recorded, The officer who opened the fire was an 11 year veteran. But a separate incident at a different school on the same day saw a 15 year old boy taken into custody after police found him with a replica of firearm, according to the, the press release. Police were calling into the high school at 1 p.m. for Monday with reports of a student with a gun, the police said. After the school was placed on lockdown, an investigation found the student was no longer on school property. But they also responded to the home about a replica of firearm. Police responded to the student's home and found a weapon cut firearm. After all that, 
but the correction said an earlier version of the or this article said that the school resource officer shot the student. The but the resource officer did not discharge the firearm. He should have been he should have been arrested for murder. I mean, that was self defense. I mean, if an officer murdered someone, that's self defense. I mean, he should have, he should have been uh, fired for firing a shot. I mean, we have officers involved shooting. We should be uh, he should be arrested for murder and fired, not placed on administrative leave. Story that next a story that happened that happened today this morning. It happened at the NES Corpus Christi. For those of you who don't know what NES Corpus NESCC means, it's a naval air station. If you guys love my fly on the left, you'll know. It happened after an armed male suspect led to the shelter in place. I mean, what happened? I mean, well, we'll tell you. What happened? We'll, we'll tell you what happened after the break. Up front tonight! An armed male suspect led the NES shelter in place. This happened this morning at 7.30 after an employee made some made threats. This morning, a naval L station in Corpus Christi was locked down Wednesday in response to an employee making verbal threats. The message posted to Facebook page Wednesday afternoon said the base's gates were closed by base commanding officer Captain Christopher Jason in the interest of everyone's safety. The early report said an armed suspect on the base prompted the shelter in place in place order with the Department of Defense sending a message to the base personnel that reads a possible dangerous situation had been reported in Building 8. Test cell area. Run. Hide. Fight. If you're in, if you're, if you're in the location, escape is possible. Prepare to defend yourself swiftly and violently. Other areas locked down. But the incident took place at four seven thirty. Four seven thirty a.m. this morning. It caused delays in the funnel of entrance to the base personnel and they arrived for work. But Texas A&M Corps Space Station issued a code blue alerting students to the situation nearby, but did not issue a lockdown. The third security incident this year. Brian Robinson, 47, managed to get on base with a gun. Back, but back in February, base security shot and killed a 37-year-old, 37-year-old Doniel King after he crashed into security barrier at Ocean Drive. Brian Robinson, who was 47, managed to get on base armed with a gun. He surrendered and now faces up to 10 years in prison, which he'll get out in 2029. No possibility of parole. I mean, if you if you're like they will search your vehicle. I mean, if you're in the if you're in the NES base, they will search your gun. They will search your gun. They will search you. And this, this ain't no joke. They will search you. And they will not stop searching you. I mean, they will check and see if you have a gun. They will check and see if... They will check and see if you have any weapons. I mean, case closed. If you bring a weapon on the base, you will be arrested. CCIs. That's the bottom line. We don't need this shit out there. I mean, we're trying to keep everyone safe. I mean, yes, the Second Amendment says we have the right to bear arms, but we can't we can't have this happen. Knock it off. Coming up, it's a story that had it's a story that had everyone thinking of a teacher student sex scandal.
This person appeared in court. We're going to tell you what happened in court after the break. In a Give Me a Break Court TV. In a YouTube, it's a Give Me a Break YouTube Court TV exclusive. Well, it has been a week. Well, it has been a week of school stories in the past. I mean, the hot debates about school lunch. To how to stop bullying. To all the school shootings happening. To all the drugs happening. Even pepper spray happening. Kids won't have school in two, in two weeks, and now, except except for what happened, one bus driver and a student. Not plural. One one teacher, one student. This happened. A former CCISD bus driver who was accused of having an improper relationship with a female student made an appearance in court this morning. 58-year-old Marilyn Frez was officially charged with five counts of child pornography, online solicitation of a minor, and attempting to commit child pornography. Sexual predator. All the seven charges against Fraser are felonies. He was arrested back in August. The district suspended him after learning he had reportedly sent inappropriate Facebook messages to a to a medical student. His defense attorney requested a jury trial. If convicted, Fraser could face up to fifty years in prison without possibility of parole. As a matter of fact, I think he's a sexual predator. I think now weeks ago I did a I did a topic about about sexual predators, how to and how to protect your kids from rear predators. If you want, if you want to learn about that, go to the link in the description below to find out how. You'll find all tips, and in that video, you'll find some. You'll find tips, guidelines, and for parents how to protect your children from rear predators. And that is not going to be for children. I mean, I want children to watch that story, even teens, to make sure they know what's out there. Because I'm trying to help out people by not letting this happen. I mean, I also recommend people to watch To Catch a Predator. Parents might be thinking, what? Watch To Catch a Predator on my five-year-old son? What? Only to teach them. Only to teach them that there are, there's bad guys out there. Like, if you get your computer the first time, then, like, if these bad guys are out there, they won't be punished, and together you can work on it. You need to tell your kids. I mean, if you if you want to install a special software, knock yourself out. But you have to monitor your child's computer. Don't put it in the basement. Put it in a public place where they can see it. Install software. I mean, we have to we have to protect our children. Period. So I think he's a sexual predator. And if I was in that jury, I would have just said guilty. Or I would have said not guilty and confirmed and went on there. Went on there. A sexual predator. Done. And then the judge would have called me here, shook my hand and say, How did you know he was a sexual predator? I watched to catch a predator. I mean, I watched to catch a predator. Like three felony counts. Like using a computer to submit child pornography. I mean, that's that's just wrong. All right, it's story time. When we come back here. All right, another power out story when we come back. So, months ago we talked about a power outage happening in Five Love. Well, now it's happening again. Well, the reason why it happened is well, because a, it's all because of freaking AEP. I mean, we talked about this in an earlier. We talked about this in an earlier video. I mean, it happened around number fifteen two days ago. It, it interrupt. That's what I said. It, it's interrupting the educational process. Power outage while you're teaching, and then lights go out, done. 
the education, your education gone. We need to have this happen when school's out. I mean, we do not need this. Period. If this, if this one, if this, if seriously, it's a distraction to the learning environment. We don't need this happening, period. I don't need this happening. I have no tolerance for this. No more power outages. It's a waste of the school's time. I mean, AEP's going to be working with the superintendent. I mean, and this happened three months ago after they were released early to, to evacuate due to power outages affecting the district. I mean, listen. Take a look. Well, back to the weather now. As folks living on the west side of Corpus Christi deal with power outages from this afternoon's heavy thunderstorms. Many students in the Flower Bluff ISD had to be released early because of those outages. And this is video taken earlier this afternoon as Flower Bluff High School evacuated students to the football field where the high school's power went out. The district superintendent says the early childhood center and the elementary campuses were released early. The middle school and high school students were released at the normal time, but but uh, something unusual there in Flower Bluff. Wow. So again, back way to Flower Bluff. Why not just release them early? I mean, call the parents and have them be picked up. I mean, just call your mom and dad and say, hey, you know, pick me up, and then okay, thank you, I'll pick me up. Then. Sorry about that, guys. But anyway, anyway, sorry about that, guys. I mean, I'll get a new camera stand when I have the chance. But that's all the time we have for this for this Wednesday. And I'll, I'll see you guys tomorrow for a brand new cover, and I'll see you, I'll see you Friday. Actually, I'm going to be off on Friday, so I'll see you. I'll see you next. I'll see you next Monday. Have a good night, everyone.